Integration of Polynomial Functions. We can integrate entire polynomial functions by breaking them down into separate components. The rule states that if you have an integral with two or more components, add it or subtract it together. then the equivalent would look something like this. You can take the first component, take the integral of the first component. I forgot to add in the dx here, so let me just add in the dx. dx equals the integral of the first component plus or minus the integral of the second. Now this may look confusing at first, but when it's applied to a problem, it doesn't look nearly as bad. So if we have some integral, say we're looking for the integral of x plus 7 dx, we can take this and separate this into two integrals, x dx plus the integral of 7 dx. Using the reverse power rule, and to refresh your memory if you don't remember that, x to the n, the integral of x to the n is going to equal x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Using that for this first component here, we get x squared over 2. And the integral of 7 is just 7x and plus c would be the answer for that. Let's do a couple more examples here to show you how this rule can be applied. And I think I will get rid of this too. I've never liked the way that that rule looked. It just looked, uh, it looks way more complicated than this really is. Okay. So let's say we were looking for the integral of x to the fifth plus some number, let's just say 1. We can separate this into, again, two different components. So we'd have the integral of x to the fifth dx plus the integral of 1 dx Again, using the reverse power rule, which I will write over here to reference the integral of x to the n equals x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Using that, we can apply that to the first component. So x to the fifth is going to look like x to the sixth over 6, and the integral of 1 dx is just x, and then we add on our plus c at the end. And this would be our final answer. Pretty straightforward. Now, let's say that we get a problem that looks a little different than that, or similar, but it's different. Let's say we have we're looking to find the integral of 2t squared minus 1 squared.
For a problem like this, you can't just jump in and just start separating. The best approach would be to foil, foil this out. So we'd have the integral of 2t squared minus 1 times 2t squared minus 1. And this is equivalent to that previous, uh, previous example. And this is a t, by the way not supposed to be dx, that's dt. Okay. And to foil these, we're just multiplying these together. So we'll do that out down here. So we would get 2t squared times 2t squared is going to equal 4. Let me add some parentheses here. So we'd have 4t to the 4th, 2t squared times the negative 1 is negative 2t squared, and then again another negative 2t squared for these two, and then we'd have positive 1. We can rewrite that again, make it a little bit more, simplify it a little bit more by combining like terms. So we'd have minus 4 t squared plus 1. And then now we can separate these into components. So we'd have the integral of, can't forget that. So then we'd have the integral of 4 t to the fourth dt minus the integral of 4t squared dt I hate when it's dt because the t's start to look like plus signs and it gets confusing so plus we have just the one dt and we can solve the integral of this right here using the reverse power rule again we'd have 4t to the fifth over 5 so I'll write the answer in a different color so we'd have 4t to the fifth over five minus four t to the third because we're again doing the reverse power rule here over three plus the integral of one in this case it's going to be t or t to the first over one but it's just t and then we add in our plus c at the end. And we can apply this to even uglier problems, such as those that contain trig functions. So I, I will do one more, I'll do one more problem for this video and um, we can we will incorporate some uh, trig so you can get a feel for that so I found a good problem here and this is actually a pretty easy one so we're looking to, get to find the integral of uh, yep 5 cosine is it 5 cosine x plus 4 sine x dx
Okay. You may have guessed that we can separate this into two different integrals. So this will equal 5 cosine x dx plus the integral of 4 sine x dx Using a rule that I went over in a previous video, we can bring the constant to the front. So I'll just write that in a different color. I'm not going to rewrite the entire problem for that. Or maybe I will. I will rewrite the entire problem. So we'll have rewritten, we'd have 5 times the integral of cosine x dx plus, and then we're going to bring the 4 out front, 4 times the integral of sine x dx. Okay. The common integral of cosine is sine, and the integral of sine is negative cosine. So our answer would look like we'd have 5 I'll write the answer in a different color. We'd have 5 sine x plus 4. I'm sorry. Well, how should I write this? It's going to be plus, plus a negative 4 because the integral of sine is negative cosine. So I'll just skip that step there and just put in the negative now. So it'll be minus 4 cosine x and the plus c. And that would be the answer for that one. I wanted to thank you for watching, and if this video helped you out, please make sure to hit the like button or leave a comment. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe for upcoming videos.